Dungeon Master is a real-time role-playing video game featuring a pseudo-3D first-person perspective. It was developed and published by FTL Games for the Atari Street in 1987, almost identical Amiga and PC ports following in 1988 and 1992. Dungeon Master reportedly sold 40,000 copies in its year of release alone, and went on to become the ST's best-selling game of all time. The game became the prototype for the genre of the 3D dungeon crawlers with notable clones like Eye of the Beholder. Topic description In contrast to the traditional turn-based approach that was, in 1987, most common, Dungeon Master added real-time combat elements akin to active time battle. Other factors in immersiveness were the use of sound effects to indicate when a creature was nearby, and primitive dynamic lighting. Abstract Dungeons & Dragons style experience points and levels were eschewed in favor of a system where the character's skills were improved directly via using them. Dungeon Master was not the first game to introduce these features. Dungeons of Dagoroth for the TRS-80 color computer first employed them in 1982. Dungeon Master was, however, responsible for popularizing these elements. Other features of Dungeon Master included allowing players to directly manipulate objects and the environment by clicking the mouse in the enlarged first-person view. It also introduced some novel control methods including the spell casting system, which involved learning sequences of runes which represented the form and function of a spell's effect. For example, a fireball spell was created by mixing the fire symbol with the wing symbol. This kind of attention to detail and focus on the user interface was typical of the game and helped create an often captivating sense of craft and ingenuity. While many previous games such as Alternate Reality, The Dungeon, The Bard's Tale, Ultima, and Wizardry offered Dungeons & Dragons style role-playing, Dungeon Master established several new standards for role-playing video games and first-person video games in general, such as the Paper Doll interface. Another factor in its popularity may have been the imaginative mythology, with players often reporting a nurturing identity with their chosen characters. Nancy Holder, wife of producer Wayne Holder, wrote the storyline in the manual from a base scenario suggested by Michael Newton and the FTL team. She is a successful novelist, and has written for television series including Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Sabrina, The Teenage Witch, and Smallville. Many reviewers considered Dungeon Master as the best example of its genre, despite the many clones that arrived to challenge it. First of these was Bloodwitch 1989, featuring similar gameplay but adding a mode allowing two simultaneous players on one machine. Other notable clones included Captive and Eye of the Beholder. <laughs> Story Many champions have been sent into the dungeon with the quest to recover Librasulis the Grey Lord Firestaff. With the Firestaff, Librasulis can take physical form again and defeat Lord Chaos. The player is Theron, the apprentice of the Grey Lord, that goes into the dungeon with the task to resurrect four champions, and guide them through the dungeon, to find the Firestaff and defeat Lord Chaos. Hall of Champions. As Theron, the player cannot progress past the first section of the game until they have selected up to four champions from a small dungeon containing 24 mirrors, each containing a frozen champion. The frozen champions are based upon a variety of fantasy archetypes to allow diversity within the player's party. <laughs> Alternative ending If the player finds the Firestaff and uses it to defeat Lord Chaos, this will be the real ending of the game. But there is also an alternative ending if the player finds the Firestaff and then leaves the dungeon without destroying Lord Chaos. <laughs> Kids Dungeon You can access a small, simple dungeon by holding a key or two during the loading screen when the FTL logo appears the keys vary each version e.g. Amiga is Enter, the kids' dungeon's mobs are very weak and the game ends after you slay the dragon, in the Dragon's Den. The dragon takes merely a single FUL bomb to kill, said item is a portable version of a fireball, the same way Ven potions are of the Poison Cloud spell. FUL bombs unlike Ven potions cannot be created though game documentation suggests they were intended to be able to. Topic: 
Topic: History. Topic: Development. Originally, Dungeon Master was started with the name Crystal Dragon coded in Pascal, and targeted the Apple II platform. Doug Bell and Andy Yaros artwork began development in their development studio PVC Dragon, before they joined in 1983 FTL Games. It was finished there in C programming language and published in 1987 for the Atari Street First. A slightly updated Amiga version was released the following year, which was the first video game to use 3D sound effects. Topic: Releases and ports. Dungeon Master was ported later to many platforms like PC, Apple IIGS, TurboGrafx CD, SNES, Sharp X68000, PC 9801, and FM Towns. The game was also translated from English into German, French, Japanese, Chinese, and Korean. According to the Definitive CDTV Retrospective, Part 2. By Peter Olufsen, Dungeon Master was ported to the Amiga CDTV, but this version was never completed because FTL could not obtain reliable information from Commodore about saving games to memory cards. Dungeon Master was also ported to Macintosh but never released. There exists a prototype for the Atari Lynx under the name Dungeon Slayers. Topic Artwork. The packaging cover art was designed and illustrated by David R. Darrow, for which Andy Yaros posed as the leftmost character pulling on the torch. The woman in the scene was Darrow's wife, Andrea, and the muscular man in the background is unknown, but hired by Darrow from a local fitness club. The painting itself is 25 to 30 inches high and doesn't contain the word master. Darrow's painting portrays a scene from the prologue in the manual for Dungeon Master. It shows the three or four main characters' last few minutes alive, and is a portrayal of the player's challenge to defeat the antagonist, Lord Chaos. The heroes in the painting are Hulk the Barbarian, Sira Child of Nature, Alex Onder, and Nobby the Prophet who's been reduced to a bunch of skulls. <laughs> <laughs> Soundtrack album A soundtrack album, titled Dungeon Master, the album, was released later. This album featured music composed by Daryl Harvey, Rex Baca, and Kip Martin. The original street version and its faithful Amiga and PC ports contain no music. The album features music composed for the FM Towns game, as well as FM Towns' version of Chaos Strikes Back, and some original tracks that were inspired by the games. Legacy While Dungeon Master itself was inspired by early Ultima games, it amazed Ultima developer Origin Systems's employees. Origin founder Richard Garriott said that he was ecstatic at discovering the neat new things I could do in the game. It influenced Ultima Vis graphical user interface and seamless map, and the later Ultima Underworld. Game journalist Nico Nervi wrote that no 3D role-playing title before Ultima Underworld 1992 could challenge Dungeon Master as a game. To date, Dungeon Master retains a small but faithful following online, with several fan-made ports and remakes available or in development. Notable reception received a faithful reconstruction of the Atari Street version, called CSBWIN, which was released in 2001. Reverse engineered in six months work from the original by Paul R. Stevens, the available source code of CSBWIN led to many ports for modern platforms like Windows and Linux. In 2014, Christophe Fontenelle released another reverse engineering project which tries to recreate all existing versions and ports. <laughs> Series overview Reception 
Dungeon Master debuted on the 15th of December 1987 on the Atari Street, and by early 1988 was a strong seller, becoming the best-selling game for the computer of all time. Bell estimated that at one point more than half of all Atari Street owners had purchased the game. Because of FTL's sophisticated copy protection, many who otherwise pirated their software had to purchase Dungeon Master to play the game. The Amiga version was the first prominent game to require 1 MB of RAM, likely causing many to purchase additional memory. At least one manufacturer of Amiga memory bundled Dungeon Master with its memory expansion kit. As with Wizardry, many others offered for sale strategy guides, game trainers, and map editors, competing with FTL's own hint book. Hosea Battles Jr. of Computer Gaming World in 1988 praised the attention to detail in the dungeon's graphics, allowing players to practically feel the damp chill of the dungeons portrayed", as well as those of the monsters, including the multiple facial expressions on the ogres. He said the control system works, "...extremely well", and, "...one's adrenaline really flows because the game is in real time." Battles also praised the extensive use of sound effects, uncommon to RPGs. He complained that the manual does not describe monsters or their attributes, of a "...frustrating." shortage of food and water replenishments and that the lack of a map makes the game extremely difficult battles called the game fantastic and said it is a welcome addition to any fantasy player's library those who want a good fantasy role playing game will love this one scorpia stated in the magazine in 1992 that the newly released ibm pc version's graphics are surprisingly good all things considered despite the game's age, but wrote that, "...no endgame has ever given me so much trouble or frustration." Although she believed that the game, "...is still eminently worth playing, even years later, and still has something to offer the seasoned adventurer." Because of the endgame Scorpia, "...can't give it a blanket recommendation." In 1993 she stated that, "...the game still holds up well after seven years, even graphically, and is worth playing today." But because of the ending was, "...not for the easily frustrated." Computer and video games in 1988 called the story a "...cliché," but praised the graphics, sound and controls. The reviewer said Dungeon Master is an example of a title which "...changes the way we think about games," and a "...must for all roleplayers." Antic called the game as "...revolutionary," as Zork and Flight Simulator 2, citing "...spectacular." graphics and stating that the game was almost worth buying for the sound effects alone despite the commonplace story where once again an evil wizard has taken over control of the world the magazine advised readers to buy this game advanced computing entertainment said the graphics are largely repetitive but wonderfully drawn and wrote the sound is sparse but the effects are great the reviewer called it a thrilling game with plenty in it to keep you searching, fighting, and pondering for a long time. He summarized the game as a huge, immensely playable, and very atmospheric mixture of role playing and adventure. If you've been looking for a real time role playing game that manages to keep you interested for long periods of time, then your prayers have been answered. The game's machine wrote. The innovative character selection system and icon display are both neatly implemented and quick to use. Praised the superb atmosphere, enhanced by the spare but apt sound effects, and called the game universe believable because of its details. The magazine praised the color and clarity of the monster graphics and the shading of the surroundings. It called the story and setting a wholly engrossing scenario which creates a complete world which can be manipulated at will, its depth fully reflects the two years it took to program it. The presentation, an interesting and evocative novella neither too involved to prove turbid not too short to be unhelpful, is superb." The reviewer summarized, "...Dungeon Master is a role player's dream, but capable of providing a good deal of enjoyment for any street owner." Start told readers to be prepared to shed every preconception you ever had about computer games. This is Dungeon Master. Noting the strong sales, the reviewer called it a true video game phenomenon and reported that, not talking to my boyfriend for a week because he lost our master spell list was certainly not an overreaction. 
Qadi Hamza of ZZAP, 64 said of the Amiga version, "...the first-person perspective ensures an incredibly realistic atmosphere, you just can't help really getting into the feeling of walking through damp echoing caverns looking for ghosts." The reviewer also said, "...the puzzles are incredibly devious, the spell system is really flexible and the need to practice magic and spells gives the whole thing that extra special depth." The reviewer asserted, this has to be the most amazing game of all time, anywhere, ever." In the same issue Gordon Houghton said, "...this is just about the most incredible game I've ever seen. When you pick it up you find you lose whole days of your life." He said, the best time to play it is late at night in a room by yourself, it's guaranteed to scare the life out of you. It's like Gauntlet in 3D, but about a hundred times better. If you enjoy arcade adventures, RPGs or combat games, but it, it's the perfect combination of all three. Reviewer Moff Evans professed to be little enthused by RPGs generally but said, I know a brilliant game when I see one and this is a brilliant game. He praised the scares delivered by ambushing monsters and said, you'd have to be deaf, dumb and blind not to be affected by the atmosphere. The magazine complained that saving games is a bit labored but praised the extremely detailed and accessible controls, interactive, detailed and extremely atmospheric scenery and said the clarity of the graphics made the game an unusually accessible RPG. It summarized, you'll be playing for months and said Dungeon Master was the best game we've ever seen. Also reviewing the Amiga version, Graham Kinsey of Amazing Computing wrote that Dungeon Master completely blows away any other RPG on the Amiga market today, and may do for some time. Dave Erickson of Amiga Computing praised the brilliant graphics, sound effects, and replay value and said Dungeon Master is the most stunning role playing game one have seen on the Amiga. Antics Amiga Plus felt the game captures the essence of Dungeons & Dragons role-playing games. The reviewer praised the dazzling graphics, called the user-friendly controls a real joy and said the game was the best graphics adventure for the Amiga to date. Your Amiga called the sound extremely well done and said the most striking feature of the game is the attention to detail. The reviewer said called the game amazing and recommended, if you never buy another game, buy sick this one. Andy Smith of Advanced Computing Entertainment several months after its release called Dungeon Master one of the all-time classics and said what makes Dungeon Master really special apart from the marvelous 3D graphics and eerie sound effects are the puzzles. The game was reviewed in 1988 in Dragon No. 136 by Hartley, Patricia, and Kirk Lesser in The Role of Computers column. The reviewers gave the game 4.5 out of 5 stars. The Lessers reviewed the PC per Mega Siemens DOS version in 1993 in Dragon No. 195, giving this version 5 stars. In 1997, 10 years after release, Dungeon Master got again a 5 from 5 stars score in a review. <laughs> Awards Dungeon Master received the Special Award for Artistic Achievement from Computer Gaming World in 1988. It achieved the top place in the magazine's game rankings system, and was entered into its Hall of Fame in November 1989. In 1990 the game received the second highest number of votes in a survey of Computer Gaming World readers' all-time favorites. In 1996, the magazine named Dungeon Master the 49th best game ever. The following is a comprehensive list of other awards received by the game. Topic: See also. 3D Monster Maze Dungeon Magic: Sword of the Elements NES game. Phantom Slayer Wizardry Ultima V, The False Prophet Legend of Grimrock